by the time you hit 30, your metabolism is going to slow down. And many people have just accepted that as truth. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tisha Ennis. This is my Space My Thoughts podcast episode three. Joke that my cousin and I would always say over the years, words are like obia. And for those who don't know what obia is, obia is an inferior power to God's power. It's a quote unquote voodoo, is what we say in the Caribbean. We said those things because words have such power that if used in a negative way, you can curse somebody's life if they don't reject it and if they don't cancel the negative words that are being spoken about them. Sometimes these words are being said behind your back. God has given us the power to cancel and reject those negative words. But one day I was sitting down just thinking about the lies that we have been told over the years to becoming an adolescent, to becoming an adult, of what to expect in our later years in life. Many adults have said things like, by the time you hit 30, your metabolism is gonna slow down. And many people have just accepted that as truth. And what happens? You tend to see that your metabolism has slowed down, you've put on weight. And so what you think that they said is truth. What you did was believe their lie and accepted it as truth for yourself. And now you are manifesting, you're physically manifesting those Beliefs. I remember a co-worker when I was in my 20s, she was older than myself. She said, oh girl, just expect that by the time you hit 30 that your metabolism is not going to be as fast and you're just going to put on weight here and there. And I just remember saying to myself defiantly, like, no, that's not going to happen to me. <laughs> I'm not going to blow up like a Goodyear blimp. Please forgive me if I'm offending anyone. I'm not trying to come from a fluffy girl, from a thick girl. I just knew that that wasn't going to be my truth. And as a matter of fact, when I became 30 and as I went well into my 30s, I actually went down a size. I even caught myself telling one of my nephews recently, oh, just wait until you become older and you start paying bills and you start having to budget and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I had to really catch myself later on and say, oh my God, where did that come from? I had to cancel those words and reject those words and, and send them back to hell from when they have come because who's to say what his life will be? He can become a multimillionaire and not have to budget to the T like majority of us have had to do. And because I've experienced living from paycheck to paycheck and my own scarcity in various stages of my life, it doesn't mean that that would have to be his reality. I recently was watching one of Adrienne Bailon's Love and Infertility, I believe the name of the podcast or the videos where she talks about her struggle with infertility and the many various doctors that she's seen to aid her fertility journey. She said that she went to a doctor and the doctor told her that she has half a chromosome. She said at that moment she burst out laughing and the doctor was really confused and perplexed as any doctor would be because maybe someone else hearing that sort of diagnosis would just be devastated. She laughed because growing up, her father would say to her, her because she was, I guess, an active child or you would do silly and funny and crazy things, jokingly said that, oh, you have half a chromosome. And it was like a running joke. And at that moment, I said, oh my gosh, this man spoke it over her life. And obviously, I know her dad didn't say it in a malicious way because most, as most of us, we think that our words don't mean anything and they don't have any sort of an impact. But words are so powerful, it doesn't know if you're joking or if you're not. You can speak to a plant and say positive things and that plant will flourish. And you can speak to that same plant and say horrible things and that plant will wither up and die. And this is scientific proof and scientific studies that have shown this. Because many of us just think that our words are just frivolous and they hold no weight, but God has put it out there as a law that if we speak unto the mountain and tell it to be that removed and be cast into the sea and not down in our heart, we'll believe the word that, that we say, it shall be done. You can call for the things that is not as though they were. With that said, I remember just saying, oh my God, her father unknowingly spoke that into existence over her life. And I really wanted to go into the comments at that moment and just say, girl, reject those words, cancel it, send it back to hell for once it's come. But I refrained and restrain myself from doing so. And it goes back to what my cousin and I would talk about from our own experiences of seeing how words have manifested even in our own lives that we have spoken to ourselves and what others have said to us that we didn't reject and had manifest. Right. In my early 20s, my brother, when he had his first child, sang this song from this popular Jamaican artist called Bautikilo. And it goes like this. My father was a breeder, so I'm continue the saga. <laughs> if you don't understand what I said, basically he was saying, my father was a man that spread his wild oats, spread his seed out there. And so I'm just continuing what he started. And my brother would joke all the time about that. And for a long time, he only had one child. But in these last few years, it's just like, 
one thing after the other and I was just like, wow, you really spoke this into existence. I want to give an example on how words can curse someone's life. I remember when I was a teenager and my brother and cousins would hang out on the corner with some of the guys on the block and from the surrounding areas. Now, Jamaican parents normally, when they see a bunch of guys just hanging out on a corner, they just think majority of the time they're up to no good. But these guys were just like us. They were children of immigrants. They were immigrants themselves and found a common friendship and camaraderie. I remember my uncle and my dad didn't like that my brothers, and what I would say my brother at the time because my other brother, Stefan, was really young. They didn't like the fact that they were playing basketball and hanging out with the other guys in the neighborhood, which made no sense. These guys were around the same age or maybe a little older and some were a little younger, but they were just regular good guys because they didn't want them really hanging around them, they would say, I don't want you hanging over there. And I remember my uncle distinctively saying, oh yeah, who not end up in prison, I will end up dead. Basically, who doesn't end up in prison will end up dead. And I just remember being in shock that he said something like that. We were all teenagers at the time. I didn't understand that words had power and weight. Had I known, I would have canceled it and rejected it. Not too much longer after he said that, one of my cousins died in a tragic accident and my brother and my cousins over the years got in trouble and would spend time in jail or got arrested here and there and some actually did time. Not much, but a little bit. And that has always stayed with me. So anytime anyone says anything negative or tries to project something negative based off of a false narrative that they've created in their head, I cancel it. I reject it. Whether it be me, someone I love, or even a stranger, I cancel it and I send it back to hell from what's it's come in the name of Jesus Christ. Because if you don't take authority over it, if you don't take it captive and send it from where it came from, it will manifest. Now, did my uncle know that his words would manifest? He probably doesn't even remember that he said something like that. And would probably deny it. I've never brought it up in family settings because I know that it would create irrevocable damage. And so I just always kept it to myself, but also shared it with other friends. And I've prayed over the years that any other negative words that would be spoken in the family would be sent back to hell from once it's come. I don't believe that he spoke those words really believing that they would manifest. And I don't believe that he really wished something like that on his nephew or his child or any of his other nephews. But because he didn't understand that words have power and they have weight and manifestive power, he spoke it frivolously. I was recently on a call with one of my dearest sister friends who happens to also be the mother of my goddaughter. She told me, I guess maybe last year, she had taken my goddaughter into the doctors to find out what they could do to help her, I guess, speak because she hadn't been really speaking sentences or words at the time. The doctors ran a series of tests and came back to my friend and said, well, we've run a series of tests and it looks like all these signs are showing that your daughter has autism. My friend immediately, prayer warrior, Niger, Nigerian sister said, oh, not my child, my child does not have autism. I did not come in here for this. The doctor said, well, I don't know what to tell you because this we ran this test and we ran that test and this is what it's looking like. She immediately packed up her daughter. Would you believe when they got home, my goddaughter said her first words. Now, what if her mother would have believed what the doctor said? What if shrunken down in fear and believed what the doctor said? I believe that her child would have continued to manifest more signs of autism. What if my friend would have accepted that? She would have been in a totally different space right now. My godchild is now talking and walking and saying her ABCs and her one, two, threes and recognizing animals and saying their names. And that is the power that God has given us to cancel and bind and rebuke negative words. When I was a teenager for a few years, I was overweight. I was never obese, but I had on more weight than I should. And I remember feeling very uncomfortable in my skin. There was a point where I was so frustrated that I went into the bathroom. I was naked. I started to touch my body all over and just start decreeing and declaring, weight come off of me now. My body is slim. Fat come off of me now. Would you know about a year after that, I slimmed down so much when I was, okay, so let me give you a little backstory. I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology. I majored in fashion design. And one of our classes was fashion drawing. So they would have professional models come into the class for us to sketch as live croquis. And when those models weren't available, who did the professor call? Me. And there were other girls in there that were willing to go up there and wanted to be the live model. But the professor, we would always call me because I'm 5'9". I was always chosen as the model. The power of my words. Over the years, I've just continued to decree and declare that I can eat anything that I want and not be overweight. I can relax and eat cake and donuts and all the yummy things and not be overweight. And of course, I do these things in moderation. You have to use common sense. When I do eat a slice of cake, I'm not eating myself over it. I decree and I declare what I'm going to look like and how I'm going to present myself here in this world. In my early 20s, I was in the office working in the fashion industry at the time. Another coworker saying, I don't want to be anything above an associate designer because as you get higher up, as you become a director and a VP, the workload is just going to become insane and just going to be too much. Just remember saying to myself, and at the time I was an assistant designer, I don't want to be anything above an associate designer either. The workload is like this right now. I just imagine, yeah, I don't want that. I remember me not going anywhere above associate designer. 
either for any other companies that I worked for because I spoke it into existence because I confessed it. A lot of other words that I spoke that put me in stagnant places in my life where I didn't mature above my confession. If we embrace the power that God has given us and actually believe that our confession becomes things and becomes reality, how magnificent it took the time to speak positive and faith-filled words, not only to ourselves, but also to our loved ones who maybe are going astray or going leeward, would transform our lives. It's so important to remember that our confession has weight and that the words that you say are very costly. So think about it when you're mad and you want to say something negative to that child or to that person that you love. Remember your words have power. Remember in your own frustration, don't curse your life. Fight against those negative thoughts and speak positivity and speak life into the dark places. And that's all I want to say. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, click that link below and hit the notification button. All the latest podcasts that come out and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye.